Hi, Steak Heath. I thought we'd have a go at um, reading the story. We're going to read Shampoozle online. There once was a jolly hairdresser named Dan Druff. Dan loved hair. Curly hair and bristly hair, eyebrows and beards. Dan loved them all. He loved the gleam of his many mirrors and the snippety snick of sparkly silver scissors. Dan even sang about hair. Hair, hair, glorious hair. It spread from your head nearly everywhere. It grows on your toes, even inside your nose. Hair, hair, hair. Only one thing upset Dan's happiness, his girlfriend. Tamote, who lived in the flat upstairs. Unlike Dan, Tam was a sad person who hid away in her bedroom. Behind tightly drawn curtains from under their hair dryers, Dan's customers could hear her wretched moans and Dan nearly tore his hair out with worry over her condition. The awful truth was... Tamote had terrible hair. Oh, Dan, she wailed, my head is dull and lifeless. I have a flaky scalp and unsightly split ends. But no ordinary shampoo is effective. Dan could find nothing to help. And as the days passed, Tam's hair grew as greasy as a chip shop mop. Now, not far away from the barber shop was an was an evil black tower which twisted into the sky like a strange hairstyle. This was the home of the bad hair witch. High in her dark creams, the bad hair witch mixed strange shampoos and hair oils which were sold all over the world. The secret ingredient came from rare plants which grew only in her private garden. Above the barber shop, Tam became convinced that one of these magical hair herbs would bring her back to life, her doll scalp and she pleaded with Dan to, to pick some. At the mention of the black tower Dan Druff felt the hairs prickle on the back of his neck. I dare not go there he whispered. What if I should fall into the evil hair grip of the bad hair witch? But Tamote complained so long and hard that at last Dan Druff could stand it no longer. All right keep your hair on he bristled. I will go to the tower and comb the gardens for your hair. So the next morning, before dawn, the brave barber crept reluctantly up the hairpin bends that led to the tower. As he walked, he sang to keep up his courage. Hair, hair, marvellous hair. The poor can have more than a millionaire. You may think it sounds silly, but it grows on my... What on earth is that? Before he could finish his song, Dan almost walked into a huge sign hanging out on the wall in before him. Dan Druff, use your head if you climb this wall. You'll wish you were dead! <gasps> oh, oh no. Dan felt a sh shiver running along his moustache. Only the thought of Tam's sad locks drove him on. Ignoring the sign, he scrambled onto the bad witch's secret garden, where he found a second sign. Dandruff, can't you read? Don't even think about nicking a weed. Oh dear, I'm a little bit worried now. Poor Dan had never been in such a hairy situation, but he bent down and began to stuff his pockets with the herbs. Suddenly, he heard a terrible voice. You must be crazy. You will pay for those plants with your very first baby. Dan's hair stood on end. It was the worst rhyme he had ever heard. Before him stood the bad hair witch. But, but, I don't have a b b baby, stammered Dan. Well, let's not split hairs, snapped the witch. I will wait for your f until your first child is born. Grabbing the last handful of herbs, Dan leapt over the wall and headed down the hill to the town. He found Tam in her bedroom, wearing a paper bag on her head. He 
and he pulled out the story of his terrifying brush with the bad hair witch. Tam was barely listening. She seized the wonderful herbs, crushed them and began to lather her scalp. There she is, look, with a bag on her head. Mm, I really hope these uh, herbs are worth it. As if by magic, Tam's hair turned into a glorious mass of glossy curls, which seemed to flow in slow motion when she tossed her head. Tam O'Tay was cured. Kerbow! Oh, now she does look rather glamorous. She tore downstairs into the sunny shop as, and as Dan shaved the bristly early morning customer, Tam happily set to work beside him, sweeping up the fallen curls and locks. That very week, Tam and Dan were married and the whole town joined them in a glorious hymn. Hair, hair, magnificent hair. It can grow down below in your underwear. It grows on your chest like a big woolly nest. Hair, hair, hair. Getting married. Oh dear. Let's hope they don't have a baby. Before the year was out, the couple's happiness was complete. A beautiful baby daughter was born. After much thought, they called her Shampoozle. In that happy, hairy world, no one thought was given to the bad hair witch. Don't get in my hair now. But the bad hair witch had forgotten nothing. High in her tower, she worked day and night on her most amazing invention yet, something all barbers dream of, a marvellous, magical, hair-growing lotion. Guess which witch will be rich, she sniggered. All I need is helpless, hairless baby to test my invention. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, dear. And so the bad hair day dawned. The bell at the little barber's shop tinkled crudely as the bad hair witch burst inside. Give me the child, she shrieked. Have you got an appointment, said Tam. Let's see, I could fit you in on Thursday. You don't understand, you fools. I need to test my new improved formula. Ultimate two-in-one hair growing lotion. Leave Shampoozle alone, pleaded Tam Ote. You cannot try out hair-brained inventions on our child. Ignoring the tears of the unfortunate couple, the bad hair witch seized Shampoozle and carried her back to the tower. To make sure the precious child would never be taken from her, the hair witch bricked up the front door behind them. As the days passed, the bad hair witch grew to love the baby and looked after her as if she were her own. She would sing as she washed the infant's hair. No more tears, baby Shampoozle. My magic shampoo is very unusual. And day by day, as shampoos all grew, her hair grew too. In a great long golden trestles, which tumbled across the floor, down the stairs, into the kitchen, under the dog, round the back of the fridge and back up the stairs again. She has got incredibly long hair. Oh no, she's having a little bath. Ha, 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 cackled the bad witch. Look at your beautiful golden hair. Sometimes hairy Shampoozle remembered her parents' little barber shop in town far below. Now their daughter had gone, Dan and Tam worked sadly and never sang any more. And so, one by one, the customers went elsewhere. Years passed and as Shampoozle grew into a young woman, the bad hair witch taught her the secret art of hairdressing. Wash your hair and keep it sweet. Lather, rinse, repeat. Rub and comb and keep it neat. Lather, rinse, repeat. Together, the bad hair witch and Shampoozle created new hair products, which were more amazing than anyone could have dreamed of. They became famous. In fact, the young prince by the name of Garibaldi heard about them from his home in a distant land. The prince, although handsome and wealthy, was as bold as a billiard ball. 
Prince Gary had tried one wig maker after another without satisfaction. So when he finally heard about the ultimate two-in-one hair growing lotion, he set out straight away. After many days, he arrived at the tower. There it is, the nicer uh, Gary Baldy prints there. Of course, even a prince cannot enter a tower without a door, so Gary Baldy concealed himself beneath the wall, and after a while, he saw an amazing thing. The bad hair witch appeared at the window with her shopping bag, and all of a sudden, a great mass of hair cascaded to the ground. The witch slid down and set off towards the town. I suppose that's what they call a hair slide, whispered the prince Gary in amazement. Half an hour later, an old lady returned with her shopping and called out, Shampoos all, shampoos all, let down your hair so I can climb to the top of your long hairy stair. Shampoos all let down her locks again and the old woman scrambled back up the tower. Gary Baldy was no fool. The next time the old woman went out, the prince stood below the window himself and called, Shampoos all, shampoos all, your hair is so curly. Let it hang down now, be a good girly. To his delight, a great coil of hair tumbled to the ground. He seized it and began to boldly go where no man had gone before. The prince scrambled into Shampoozle's room. And when his royal eyes fell on the lovely Shampoozle, he was captivated by her hairiness. He leant towards her and kissed her ruby red lips. There and then, Shampoozle and the prince fell in love. Gary told her that he adored her limitless locks and how he would love to have some of his own. To his amazement, Shampoozle replied that she had grown tired of her hair. It didn't half hurt when people climbed up it, she complained. It takes a week to wash it. But then, to the prince's joy, Shampoozle pulled out a tiny bottle of ultimate two-in-one hair growing lotion and began to massage his shiny scalp. Almost immediately, a single hair popped out of the prince's head. The first hair was followed by the second, the second by the third, and within ten minutes, the prince had a mass of golden curls, snaking down his back nearly as long as Shampoozle's. Garibaldi sees Sam Poozle and jumps with joy. My prince, we must get wash and go, whispered Sam Poozle. She brushed a few stray hairs from his collar and with one final kiss, the prince climbed down Sam Poozle's hair and slipped away into the shadows. It wasn't long before the bad hair witch returned. Sam Poozle, Sam Poozle, don't make me shout. Let down your hair, girl, don't hang about. Soon as she entered the salon, the witch spotted Garibaldi's little cow, which Shampoozle had left hanging on the coat hook. The witch was furious, and after a terrible argument, stormed into her bedroom, leaving Shampoozle weeping pitifully. The prince, meanwhile, decided that, witch or no witch, he had to see Shampoozle again. He stood at the foot of the tower and whispered, Shampoozle, Shampoozle, here is your prince. Throw down your piggy tail, my hair needs a rinse. Immediately a long lock of hair curled out of the window and tumbled onto the ground. But just as the prince was about to climb up, he saw a figure sliding down. It was Shampoozle. I didn't know what I... I didn't think of this before, she said. All that stupid hair, I snipped it off, tied it onto the bed, then I slid down to you. And at last we have escaped from the bad hair witch. That was a close shave, replied Gary Baldy, softly stroking her silky stubble. Come on, let's really let our hair down. So Shampoozle and the prince ran away to his castle, but she didn't forget her parents, Dandruff and Tamote. Although they were rich, Shampoozle and Garibaldi liked to work in Dan's shop on Saturdays. Before long, the little barber's shop was once again the busiest in the land. It's amazing how my customers keep coming back, laughed Dan. And it was true. Some of the customers seem to have as many as five haircuts a day. Perhaps they just have another haircut by Shampoozle. Or perhaps... The secret shampoo she uses has something to do with it. 
Or perhaps they come for an endless happy song to which drift across the hairy town. High in her tower, even the bad witch joins in. Hair, hair, sensational hair, shampoozles the girl to share your hair care. She'll give you a shave or a permanent wave. Hair, hair, hair. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story, uh, Stoke Heath, and I'll see you again soon.